Hello there, thanks very much for coming and watching what's going to be hopefully a short video about radiation, uh, background radiation and its uses. Let's have a quick check of the objectives. Okay, you can always stop the video and refer to those and they're at the end of the video as well. Remember we're doing a flip lesson, there's always three stages. Don't forget that summary, I'll be looking for that in class and don't forget to have some questions to ask as well. Thanks very much. Here we go. So, first thing, I'm going to shut up and you can watch this. Where does radiation come from and how does it affect us? Radiation in large doses is dangerous, as we all know from films and comic books. But did you know that you're constantly being bombarded by tiny amounts of radiation all the time? In rocks and soil, fresh water and seawater, and just about every other naturally occurring material, including you, there are tiny amounts of radioactive elements, including uranium and radium, which give out a constant low level of radiation known as background radiation. Some of these elements, like uranium, have been around since the Earth was formed. They were made originally when giant stars exploded at the end of their lives. These events, which are called supernovae, are sufficiently powerful to fuse together lighter elements to make large, heavier elements. Some radioactive elements are themselves the products of other radioactive substances decaying, like radon gas, which is produced naturally by the radioactive decay of uranium. Radon can build up underground, eventually making its way to the surface and into people's homes, exposing them to much higher doses of radiation. This is particularly important in places where there's a lot of granite rock, which contains relatively high levels of uranium, like parts of Devon and Cornwall. A tiny amount of radioactivity also comes from the testing and use of nuclear weapons. We're also continuously exposed to cosmic radiation that showers the Earth from space, creating a steady supply of radioactive isotopes as it does so. So there you go. Now, there's this radiation then which uh, we're constantly exposed to and we sum it all up by calling it background radiation. Almost all of it comes from natural sources, uh, but there's also some man-made. Uh, so for example, if you have to get an x-ray to a dentist, a hospital if you've broken a bone, and uh, of course, obviously during the Second World War, two atomic bombs were dropped, and since then there've been some testing of atomic bombs, and some of that radiation still hangs around, as well as some of the radiation that comes from big nuclear power station accidents, like uh, the one that happened at Chernobyl when I was in Year 12. So uh, go and work out how old I am. Okay, this pie chart tells us about typical sources then of radiation in the British Isles. You can see that about half of it comes from radon gas. If you live somewhere like Devon or Cornwall, or possibly up near Aberdeen, where you've got a lot of granite in the rocks, you'll get more. Okay, X-rays is the next biggest chunk. Okay, and obviously if you're having a lot of dental work done, or you've broken some bones, you've been in an accident, you'll have more X-rays than other people. Uh, rocks and building materials. If your house is made of granite, you'll get a much higher dose than if it's not. Uh, obviously, there's, there's radiation in the food that you eat and some of the water that you drink. Uh, and you're constantly being bombarded by cosmic rays from outer space which are very very high energy rays uh, which counters radiation and you can see only a very tiny fraction comes from man-made sources okay quick summary this one's interesting you'll see doctors and dentists wear like a special badge okay and this special sort of rectangular plastic badge actually records how much radiation they receive. We'll be looking at those in class. Okay, this little table is something that I want you to do specifically to be ready for next lesson. Okay, I'm going to put into this table the uses of radiation and I want you to think about for each one what sort of range you want the radiation to have and then what sort of lifetime you want it to have so that we can match it to some actual sources and say which one will be best for each job. Okay, so jobs wise, actually every house has got a source of radiation in, it's in your smoke alarm. Uh, you'll probably have bought some food recently which has had radiation used to make sure it stays fresh for a long time. 
Uh, there's something called a medical tracer. Sometimes if you've got something wrong maybe with your digestive system, uh, you might be asked to eat a meal which actually contains some radiation. And then the doctor will put you uh, in front of a camera and they'll actually be able to video real time the movement of that food through your body and they can find out if there's going to be a problem with your uh, digestive system, for example. Uh, foil thickness. Believe it or not, the thickness of a piece of foil is controlled using radioactive sources. Now you want it to be thin, if it gets too thin it will break. If it gets too thick, it will be very flexible and you'll use up more aluminium and it's going to cost the, uh, cost the company more money. And they actually use uh, a radioactive source to control how thick or thin it becomes. So do you want it to be a long range, short range, long lifetime, short lifetime? Okay. Radiotherapy. If you had a problem with your thyroid gland, which is here in your neck, okay, you would actually have uh, it would be treated by having some radiation inside your body to kill off the cancer, which is here inside you. So, do you want that radiation to have a short range or a long range? Do you want it to have a long lifetime or a short lifetime? You sometimes hear people who are being treated for cancer have radiotherapy, where they sort of lie on it on a special bed and they have beamed into them. Uh, some radiation which also helps kill off the cells because low radiation can cause cancer if you have cancer in your body it will also be one of the things that you call kill off the cancer cells more than it kills off your own cells so if they're beaming it into your body does it have to have a long range or a short range do you want it to have a long half time or a short half time think about that that's a list of uses so as a summary obviously radiation has got a lot of uses and the type of isotope, the type of radiation we use, is going to depend on the range and the lifetime required. So just to skip back, make sure you've got that table please in your books and you've had a go at filling it in, ready for next lesson. Okay, I said it was going to be a brief, that's all. There's the objective, stop and pause the video and check have you met those objectives with the notes that you've made. And don't forget, there's three steps. You've done step one, now you've got to think about writing a summary of what you've learned. I have learned that. Okay, specifically, what have you learned? Be specific. And then, can you come up with two or three questions, please? Write them down and be ready to ask them in the lesson. So, thanks so much for watching. See you soon.